students and my teacher friends namaskar i welcome you to the presentation lecture on lactation as you can see on the screen i am showing you one concept map for the lactation process and in your exam if examiner is going to ask the question on lactation he is going to frame the question from this concept map now you might be wondering uh, how confidently or how surely i can tell you like this that the examiner is going to frame the question from this concept map uh, i am telling you like this because this concept map covers the entire portion of your lactation topic that's why i am telling you and i am showing you this so you can go through this concept map properly and now and if you can prepare this concept map by your own then i will say tata bye bye lecture is over but give me some time so that i will explain you the entire topic of the lactation first of all this is the definition of the lactation it is a simple definition not a complicated one now what is lactation so lactation is basically the production and the ejection of milk from the mammary gland and the main hormone or the principal hormone which is responsible for the production of milk that is the prolactin hormone and this prolactin hormone is secreted from the anterior pituitary so two names you need to remember over here one is the prolactin and another one that the anterior pituitary is secreting the prolactin now the stages or the phase of the lactation or the physiology of lactation now here as you can see <clears throat> there are four phases of lactation one is mammogenesis second one is the lactogenesis third one is the galactokinesis and the fourth one is the galactopoiesis now among this four stages the first two stages that is the mammogenesis and the lactogenesis and these stages are not included in your syllabus now one line only for the mammogenesis what is the meaning of mammogenesis so preparation of breast that means the development of mammary gland for milk production milk secretion that is called mammogenesis and what is lactogenesis so synthesis and secretion of milk that is called lactogenesis this line only this much information you need to remember for this two stages now what is included <coughs> in your syllabus that is the this process we are going to discuss that is the galactopoiesis what is galactopoiesis maintenance of lactation so we will study this maintenance of lactation and galactokinesis that is the expulsion of milk that we are going to discuss so these two processes galactopoiesis and galactokinesis we need to focus we need to understand these things now <clears throat> we are moving forward and here as you can see on the screen this mother has recently given the birth to the baby and this newborn baby as you can see is sucking the mother's nipple now when the baby is sucking the mother's nipple at that time the lips of the baby also touching the areola now we know the areola what is areola the pigmented portion around the nipple is known as the
the areola. So now as the baby is sucking the nipple and also touching the areola, so the skin receptor in the mammary gland, they are excited, they are stimulated. And when with this skin receptor, the somatic nerve is there in the contact with this receptor. So from the skin receptors, the nerve impulse <coughs> is produced, is generated and where this nerve impulse is passing, where it is traveling, so it is traveling with the help of the or inside the somatic nerve this nerve impulse and where this nerve impulse is reaching so this nerve impulse reaches to the spinal cord so with the blue line okay with the blue line this efferent or the somatic nerve is shown now before I explain you the lactation process I would like to <coughs> tell you something about the non-lactation process non-lactation now what is non-lactation now we know that under the normal situation under the normal circumstances um, the girls and the woman's breast or the mammary gland they are not producing milk now I essentially apologize to the girls and the women for this point that the normal <coughs> condition the breast or the mammary gland is not producing milk but without that without saying that I cannot <coughs> move forward in this lecture so that's why we need to understand under the normal condition why the memory <coughs> gland is not producing or not secreting the milk so as you can see this one this is the entire hypothalamus is shown and under the normal condition what is happening this is the RQ8 nucleus as you can see on the screen this is the RQ8 nucleus and this RQ8 nucleus is secreting DA. Now, what is DA and what is RQ8 nucleus? So, for RQ8 nucleus, as you can see, okay, if you are interested, you can go through this information for the RQ8 nucleus. And RQ8 nucleus is basically the aggregation of neurons, okay, in the mediobasal hypothalamus. So, you can read this information regarding the RQ8 nucleus if you are interested. Now here, coming back to our discussion, so as you can see under the normal condition when the breasts are not producing the milk, so what is happening that the RQ8 nucleus is <coughs> synthesizing the dopamine and where this dopamine is going, so this dopamine with the medium of blood is reaches over here. So now as you can see, in the this is the anterior anterior lobe of the pituitary gland and over here as you can see this yellow color cell so this dopamine dopamine is affecting this lactotropes yellow color cell are the pro, the name of the cell is prolactin releasing leptotrope now due to the influence of dopamine these lactotropes are not producing are not secreting prolactin so that's why under normal circumstances the mammary gland is not producing milk that is the reason now over here what is happening the baby <coughs> has born and as you can see the baby is sucking mother's nipple okay so I have already <coughs> explained how the nerve impulse is traveling and the nerve impulse is reaching to the spinal cord now from the spinal cord 
you can read the information over here now from the spinal cord this is one neuron okay and with this neuron nerve impulse is passing to this arcuate nucleus okay so now as the nerve impulse or the stimuli has passed to the arcuate nucleus so arcuate nucleus is secreting lesser amount of dopamine so now the less amount of dopamine very very less amount of dopamine is produced so now we can say since the dopamine which is very low in a quantity so now this prolactin releasing lactotope they are excited and since these cells are excited they are producing hormone prolactin and as you can see from anterior pituitary where this prolactin is going so prolactin is going into blood and why the medium of blood where this prolactin is reaching so prolactin is reaching to the breast and where this prolactin is affecting so this prolactin is affecting the alveolar cell okay now how this prolactin is affecting so here i am showing you this now we have already studied the structure of the mammary gland now we know in the mammary gland there are 15 to 20 lobules so these are the lobules and <coughs> inside the lobules these are the alveoli okay so here as you can see this is the one lobule and inside the lobule there are the alveoli so one alveoli is shown over here and these are all these cells these cells these are the alveolar cells now as you can see the alveolar cells what they are producing okay now we know prolactin hormone and this hormone is acting upon this alveolar cell so now due to the effect of prolactin this alveolar cell these cells are producing the milk okay and this process of secretion of milk is known as galactopoiesis okay so with this we have completed the half of the portion of our discussion okay i have explained you the process of galactopoiesis how the milk is secreted by the alveolar cell now this is also a very good chart so during your exam time very quickly you can go through this okay suckling baby is sucking the mother's nipple so the stimulation of skin receptor on nipple and areola so nerve impulse okay generated and it is traveling with the help of somatic nerve nerve impulse goes to spinal cord from spinal cord neuron okay then the arcuate nucleus okay so less amount less amount of dopamine so the lactotroph in the anterior pituitary they are secreting the hormone prolactin prolactin is acting upon the alveolar cell so alveolar cell secrete the milk this process is known as galactopoiesis now the other stage okay the second stage which is there in your syllabus that is the galactokinesis so now i am discussing this stage with you i am explaining this so here you can see the same same discussion 
okay this thing the baby baby sucking mother's nipple then the stimuli nerve impulse and uh, nerve impulse reaches to the spinal cord now over here what is happening neuron as you can see this neuron this one this neuron okay is sending the nerve impulse or the stimuli to the paraventricular nucleus and another neuron from the spinal cord okay another neuron <coughs> nerve impulse so another neuron is sending the nerve impulse to the supra optic nucleus now what is para ventricle nucleus so if you are interested to know about that so this is basically the part of the hypothalamus and it is a group of neuron and what is supra optic nucleus so if you are interested you can go through this the supra optic nucleus is basically the neuro secretory cells that are present in the hypothalamus okay you, and this entire information i have wrote for you you can go through this okay so now these are the two nucleus and what this two nucleus so when the stimulus or the nerve impulse is from the spinal cord due to the suckling when the nerve impulse reaches to this two nucleus that is the paraventricular and the supra optic nucleus this two nucleus they are secreting the hormone oxytocin so now i am showing you the oxytocin and where this oxytocin is going so this oxytocin is growing it is accumulated it is stored in the posterior lobe of the pituitary and from the posterior lobe of pituitary this oxytocin hormone is entering into the blood okay now as you can see over here i have written that this oxytocin is carried to the breast to the blood so this oxytocin now it is reaching to the mother's breast or the mammary gland now what this oxytocin is doing okay when this oxytocin reach into the mammary gland so i am showing you the function of oxytocin now here you can see once again over here this is the this is the alveoli these are the alveolar cell and on the periphery okay so this alveolar cell on the periphery they are surrounded by these cells and what is the name of this cell so these are the myo epithelial cell okay so this myo epithelial cell they are in a contact with the alveolar cell now we know that the alveolar cell they are secreting the milk so here in the entire lumen so the lumen of the alveoli is filled with the milk okay and now what this myo epithelial cell is doing now they are under the influence of the hormone oxytocin okay and now what this oxytocin is doing so it is acting on this myo epithelial cell so due to the effect of the oxytocin the myo epithelial cell they contract and since this myo epithelial cell they are contracting and they are applying the pressure on this alveolar cell so due to the contraction of the myo epithelial cell the pressure okay <coughs> is on the alveolar cell okay so we can say the alveoli the entire alveoli is pressurized and due to this pressure or this contraction of the myo epithelial cell the milk enters over here okay so what is this part so this portion is the known as the ductules okay so when the milk enters into ductule that process is known as the galactokinesis 
okay and what is galactokinesis the other name of the galactokinesis so the as we have learned that the milk is ejected or milk expulsion or milk let down okay so due to the contraction of myoepithelial cell the alveoli is contracted it is pressurized so milk milk come out okay in the ductules milk enters into ductule and that process is known as the <coughs> milk ejection or the milk expulsion or the milk let down <coughs> or also known as <coughs> excuse me <coughs> galactokinesis so now i have explained the both the mechanism that is the galactopoiesis and galactokinesis now some information i would like to tell you over here you can see this is the myoepithelial cell and this is the alveolar cell now you observe this cell closely okay and inside the cell the milk this is the golgi body okay and from the golgi body the proteins are produced then the formation of lipid is taking place inside the cell then the salt are secreted then the sugars formation of sugar okay from the golgi body is taking place so these are the components the lipid protein salt sugar all these are the components of the mother's milk but this the production of this component that is the protein lipid salt and sugar it is not in your syllabus so i am not discussing how this proteins or the milk lipids are produced okay so now <coughs> we are moving forward so we have started from this point first i had explained you the definition of lactation then the phases only two phases okay you have to study it. then now this part maintenance of the secretion now as you can see so many points are written over here but this what is the title maintenance of milk secretion or the galactopoiesis in simple word i will tell you that as long as the baby is sucking the mother's nipple the mother's mammary gland is going to produce the milk that's it okay because the due to the suckling okay the or the nursing of the baby the mother's neuro endocrine reflex is causing 10 to 20 fold surge in the prolactin secretion so when we can say that the once the baby sucks the mother's nipple so there is a 10 to 20 fold surge in the prolactin secretion by the mother so as long as mother is breastfeeding the child she will be continuously producing the milk let's say she is breastfeeding her child for 2 to 3 years so do, during this 2 to 3 years she will be able to produce the milk in her mammary gland so that is the meaning of this thing and you can go through this information and one more thing is there which is very unique about the mother why our mother is great see okay stimuli stimuli such as sight sound crying now you can imagine this thing as if by looking at the baby mother's memory gland is producing milk by hearing the sound of the baby mother's breast is producing milk if the baby is crying then also mother is producing the milk for the baby so this is the wonderful phenomena and these are the uh, psychological component 
okay in the neuro endocrine reflex now one more point is there that is the colostrum now what is colostrum now when the baby is <coughs> born so after the birth of the baby mother first few days secret a thick yellowish fluid from her mammary gland and this yellowish fluid is known as the colostrum and this colostrum is very important from for the newborn why it is important because uh, in the colostrum there is a lesser amount of fat and less amount of lactose is present than the milk then it is having the protein part but the main thing that the colostrum is having iga antibodies and what this iga antibodies are doing so they are providing the passive immunity to the newborn okay and since this iga <coughs> are there in the baby's body so the baby's body is able to fight with certain diseases for example the bacterial inflammation uh, bacterial inf infections or the respiratory syncytial virus or the gastrointestinal virus which is causing the diarrhea so we can say the antibodies which are present in the colostrum okay they are providing the passive immunity to the newborn and they are also protecting the baby now <clears throat> few more points regarding the colostrum so colostrum is the deep yellow colored fluid secreted by the mammary gland okay during the first few days of the postpartum period and what is there in the colostrum so high protein content is there 8.5 gram per deciliter deciliter means 100 ml so in 100 ml mother's milk there is 8.5 gram protein content is there colostrum then the immunoglobulin lactoferrins are there then the granular bodies are there what are the granular bodies these are the colostrum corpuscles and this colostrum corpuscles are made up of alveolar cell and the leukocytes which are loaded with the fat and the colostrum is easily coagulated into solid mass okay so now uh, some some women those are not educated uh, they think that this colostrum is useless and they avoid to provide this colostrum to their baby but now we are having the biological background and we know this colostrum how important it is for the baby so we are not going to throw this colostrum but we are definitely going to provide to our newborn okay so it it is very good for the our children health okay now over here <coughs> this is the one table okay and here in this table there is a comparison of human milk and the cow's milk okay so you can go through this ha na protein carbohydrate fat minerals calcium and for example in colostrum uh, 8.5 gram of protein is present per deciliter okay and the mature milk of mother so it is having 1 to 2 gram of protein per deciliter and in cow's milk 3.5 gram of protein per deciliter so this is <coughs> some good information for you so you need to keep this in your mind and this is also a good table so you can go through this you can compare the human colostrum human milk and the cow's milk so you can go through this you can and the calorific value then the 
calcium okay lactose fat casein all this information you can go through this then now this thing okay this point as you can see at birth okay there is no development of the mammary gland or the breast now at puberty that is the 8 to 13 years of age what is happening due to the effect of this hormones the lobules they are starting to develop okay or we can say the alve alveoli are starting to develop during the puberty now this is the pregnancy period during pregnancy these are the hormones and from placenta hcs all these hormones they are affecting the lobules and the alveoli so the alveoli look like this okay lobules look like this and this is the period when the mother is breastfeeding the child so during lactation all this hormone they are affecting the lobules of the mammary gland so mammary gland all the lobules and all the alveoli they are completely mature completely developed and they are uh, full fledgedly they are producing the milk they are secreting the milk during lactation and the last thing that is the menarche or the menopause so what is happening this hormones due to this hormone now <clears throat> the size of the lobules or the alveoli is decreasing during the menopause and it is no more producing milk okay so with this i have completed this topic of lactation i hope this presentation lecture will help you in your preparation in your preparation for your exam and this lecture will pull in your studies my name is manish kosti sir i am from ahmedabad india bye bye namaste